You guys are going to need a snack because I have got some tea for you. Hey guys, welcome. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining me. My name's Roxanne and welcome to my channel. If you are not new, thanks so much for coming back. I really appreciate you clicking on the video. So I never ever thought in a million years that I would be telling you guys a story. I never thought I would ever have to do a video like this ever in my YouTube career. I knew maybe there would be some circumstances or situations where this would happen, but never to this extent. So if you follow me on Instagram, you guys probably already know that I have warned you all about a certain person and I wanted to come on here and tell you guys the story about what happened to me so that if she tries or he tries or whoever it is, if they try to do this again, then maybe this video will go viral so that someone will see it and not fall for the scam as well. It's big, you guys. It's serious. It's elaborate. And it's really, really awful. So let's go ahead and just get started because I think that this is so important to just jump right in and all that nonsense. So let me go ahead and start from the beginning and I will do this as quick as possible so you guys can hear the entire story in not so many words. So about a week ago I was contacted on one of my my giveaways that I do on my channel and the comment that's no longer there, it's been deleted, says um, please contact me I want to write a story about you. That's it, right? Or, or your story needs to be told. Something to that effect. So I'm like oh god, you know my first instinct is don't trust her don't trust him, whoever it was. And I should always listen to that, mind you. That's a lesson here. So essentially, I, you know, take the bait and I email this person uh, from the email that she listed. And we talk for a couple of days about how she feels that I'm such a good person and she found my channel she'd been watching me for a really long time um, and she is a part of this organization who gives money to people that do good in the world and they you know have foundations and sponsors and all these people and you know people have gone on Ellen who who she sends to them and all of that so basically using now Ellen DeGeneres's name uh, in slander, which is probably not a good idea being as how she's a celebrity and all. So long story short there is that we got to talking and many promises were made and you know I started to believe her a little bit. At first I was very skeptical, kind of kept my distance, didn't tell her too much, um, asked for a lot of different information, a lot of questions, and eventually she gained my trust over the course of about three days, four days maybe. So she asked for my story because she was going to write this huge article, this huge piece about me and send it to all these different foundations, send it to all these different kidney organizations because she knew that that would get my attention because she knew how important this illness is to me and how important finding a cure for this illness is for me and my son and she used that and she pulled on my heart strings where that's concerned. That was my first mistake. I should never have trusted anybody who did that. Regardless of that fact, however, I gave her my story, you guys. I'm talking from my childhood all the way to present day. Everything that's happened to me, I shared things with her that nobody knows and I, that was my first bad. You know, I never should have done that because that just now means that she has as much information on me as my husband, you know, and I regret that because she knows things about my family now that I'll never get back. Anyway, that's something I have to live with. Um, and I sent her pictures of my family, you know, public pictures, so none that were private. All of them are on Instagram and Facebook, so it doesn't worry me a whole lot there. Um, unless she tries to use them for her personal profit, which then she'll have a problem. I uh, sent her some pictures of my giveaway drawers, and those are public because they're on Instagram. Uh, so we got to talking, and you know, she was writing the article, and initially I was supposed to have it by Sunday night. Well, Sunday night came, and there was no article. 
and she didn't contact me and text me Monday morning as we exchanged numbers and she said I'm so sorry my partner wants to look at the article and edit things and you know kind of move it around for you to approve it and I said oh oh okay you know whatever that may be and, and just kind of that's when I started to really think a little bit about what was happening so I kind of gave her the benefit of the doubt and waited for her to contact me and contact me and then you know another day went by and she said oh you'll have it by you know in a couple of days and I'm thinking okay I'm still gonna give her the benefit of the doubt you know we'll kind of see what happens so, yesterday came along and I hadn't received the article yet and I said hey is your article ready I would really like to see it and she texts me back, oh yeah, you know, it's gonna be ready, you'll be able to see it, you have to approve it before midnight so we can get it to print on all of these, you know, websites and things. And she could tell, I think, in my text messages that I was really skeptical, that I was, you know, saying things about the fact that I, I was really scared about this and not trusting her and my kids are involved and I was really scared about letting her know my story and things and so she says oh can I call you let me go ahead and call you and we'll kind of work it out and I'm like okay well th maybe this isn't a scam and she's willing to call me I was wrong so she calls me yesterday morning as I'm getting ready for work and she's from Minnesota so I I hear and her accent is very Minnesotan uh which this is where the, the it confuses me because I'm not sure if it's a multitude of people if there's like a lot of people involved in this scam or if it's just her and someone else because the way she sounded and spoke is very different than the way she wrote in text so that's kind of my first like tr like my first little light bulb you know that it wasn't it wasn't the same it wasn't connecting so she called me and we talked for a little while about an hour and she told me all of these great things about how the the pkd foundation has decided to sponsor me and you know they've sponsored a multitude of girls about five or six girls and um you know she's helped in so many ways and this one girl got twelve thousand dollars and she quit her job for it and they give you the option in their foundation to either take a lump sum or to wait 30 days to allow the money to accumulate and for you to get whatever um prizes or whatever money is awarded to i guess or whatever money is donated is a better term so i said you know what i'm not a greedy person go ahead i'll wait the 30 days at this point i'm getting a little more skeptical because of things she's saying in the conversation uh things like only you and i will be able to see the amount you can't tell anybody that you're going on ellen um you can't tell anybody what the a foundation is that's helping you so she's telling me all these things that I can't do, and I ask her, you know, can I make a video about this? Can I tell my subscribers how great this is? It's amazing. I can't believe it. My treatment's going to be paid for. My foundation, you know, everything I need for medical is going to be paid for, which is what she told me. So she says, yeah, go ahead, um, but I would probably wait until everything is said and done so that, you know, you have, like, the truth to tell behind the video. Um, you know, you can't say anything about Ellen because, you know, Ellen, da 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 And so saying these things that made sense at the time, but I kind of questioned in the back of my head. We leave the phone call, and I'm texting her throughout the day, asking how the article is, am I going to be able to see it? You know, oh, yes, yes, absolutely, you'll be able to see it. You have to approve it. I can't print it without the approval. Uh, I said, okay, great, you know, let me know when it's coming. So about four o'clock yesterday came and she sends me a text message and says, I can't believe this. I'm sitting at my desk shocked. And I'm like, oh, well, you know what's going on. So she sends me a text that says Bank of America, the Bank of America Foundation or the something something foundation, the Bank of America something has just donated $750,000 to an account that we set up for you for, for this project. And that's when my wheels started turning. No way in hell is Bank of America going to donate to somebody because of an article. She said she sent them a very rough draft and they liked it and they decided to go ahead and donate the money. At first I was like, oh my gosh, you know, so anyone hears that kind of money and their first reaction is, wow you know I was shocked I was kind of standing in the middle of the road going is this real I couldn't believe it I started to cry she really made me feel like I was going to be able to take care of my family and my medical was going to be able to pay be paid for you guys she was very very slick very manipulative her words were very 
intellectual, she knew what to say until she started to slip up because she knew that I was catching on. So she tells me in this text message, I'm going to verify with Bank of America tomorrow. I think it'll be good if we both call them. Saying things so that she can kind of catch the, the skepticism, you know, so she can kind of pull back a little bit to try to catch my attention. And I'm like, yeah, that'll be great. You know, let's let's call him, whatever. So I get home and I start thinking. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start questioning because I'm not just going to trust some girl I've never met who's in Minnesota with my life, with my livelihood. So I start questioning the situation and sending her, you know, questions about, can you send me the screenshot of the email you received? Can I see the account information? Can I have the numbers to the account you set up? Can I see a rough draft of the article? And she starts getting very, very, how do I say, um, aggressive in her text messages. Very, very aggressive in her wording. And she starts telling me, you're being pushy and I'm doing this for you. There's nothing in it for me. And things that you say when you know you're caught, right? She sends me an email of the Bank of America donation, you guys. And... I was shocked that she even did that because that was like, I think where she went wrong. Number one, how I kind of started putting the pieces together. So she sends me this email and I investigate it. I, you know, it's very like convoluted and I'm expecting, I think that she was expecting me not to like take it anywhere. Cause the person sees that kind of money and they're like, Oh my gosh, that's a ton of money. But being the smart woman that I am, I did investigate it. I took it. I, I emailed the names of the people that it said, um, that it said to email, to reply to the message, to get the money. But I'm being careful of what I say because I don't want to get my channel taken away. So I'm just being very careful because I don't want to get in trouble for any slander or anything. Um, anyway, so I investigate some of the names on the email and I email, you know, is this email real or is it a scam? Just like that. And of course the emails bounce back. One of them is to like some other country and the other one is like, uh, pete.anderson at bankofamerica.com like the most generic email you could ever put right so it comes back and I screenshot the, the 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 comeback of the email and I send it to her and I said dang it looks like this is a scam you know because she was very skeptical of the email we had to make sure that it was all it was all correct and things and the money was really there so she proceeds to say, oh, I'm pissed. Like, this is why I don't deal with people like this. This is why I'm just going to use foundations, da, 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 da. Coming back like she's mad too and this is ridiculous and she's doing this out of the kindness of her heart. So things progress and I kind of start questioning her a little bit. And some of the text messages that come back are very aggressive again, overly aggressive, all capital letters. Um, you know what, you guys? I'll just read some of them to you. How about so, that? The first text I sent her last night about all of the um, information with Bank of America. So after she says, oh, I want to confirm, da, 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 she says, oh, this is the biggest supporter I've ever seen. $100,000 yes from a sponsor, but $750,000 never, making it seem like it was, you know, so great. And, and really, you guys trying her hardest to make her company, her business, herself be legit. I said, hey, when you get a second, could you screenshot me a picture of the account? Da, 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 da. So then she starts to kind of um, backtrack and she says, oh, I shouldn't have told you before I confirmed it. I need to be more careful on what I say to you. I'm so sorry. Uh, I will confirm with the bank in the morning. I'm in shock. I don't believe it either. I want solid proof that the funds are in there. But yes, I can send you a screenshot picture of the email. I promise to confirm everything before I tell you. I told my partner and she was shocked and said to confirm with the bank before you tell Roxanne. I told you anyway, so let's pray it's real. It better be. It's Bank of America. She says, oh, I have a lot of work to do. I can't talk anymore, blah, 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 blah. And then she starts to talk about the pictures because she's trying to kind of gain my trust again, right? Who are the people in the picture? Has explained to me who are your family members? And she sends me back a picture of my family. Okay, so she sends me back a picture of my family, you guys. And it's all dark. And I mean, you guys can kind of see right here. So this is the picture that she sends me from her phone, okay? It's all convoluted and there's, you know, it's dark around it. So you can tell it's obviously not a place where a well-known makeup artist would be working, right? So there's some things in the picture that kind of make me a little bit weary, uh, some things in the background that I see and I start to question her even more. I kind of play along and I said, hey, 
my aunt, who's a private detective with the LAPD, thinks it's super critical that we check out the deposit as well. She said that there's a scam going around about Bank of America. I hope that's not the case. I do not have an aunt who is an LAPD officer, you guys, okay? I just wanted to kept to call her bluff. So she sends me, sends me this email and it's incredibly convoluted. You know, you guys can kind of see. It's, it's really, really, it's like the picture she sends me is, is almost unreadable. But the email addresses are, one of them is foreign and the other one is peter.anderson at bankofamerica.com. It says, you know, her email, and then it says donation to Roxanne in the subject. It says 750,000 US dollars was deposited or was donated to Roxanne by Bank of America. Please reply to redeem via pete.anderson at bankofamerica.com. That was my first indicator because the first email says, the first little section says peter.anderson. Then down there it says pete.anderson. Then it says, thank you, Foundations of Bank of America. First of all, that foundation doesn't exist, you guys. It just doesn't exist. So she says, that is what I got today. I said, okay, I'll check it out, blah, 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 blah. I check it out. I sent her the text message back, and then that's when, you know, she proceeds to be upset because it's a scam. So then I continue to ask her the questions, and here's what she responds. This is supposed to be so, this isn't supposed to be so stressful on you or me. And I'm feeling a little like you almost don't want this to happen because you keep saying you're skeptical. I came to you to write a piece about your YouTube videos and thought what you were doing was so amazing and got the Kidney Foundation to make you a donation page. Really? Did you though? And now you're turning this into an investigation. Roxanne, this is to raise money for your family, not CSI. That's my job, to protect your well-being. I'm very frustrated right now. Maybe you can contact the Kinney Foundation and do it yourself because you want to take over my story, so maybe I should let you write it and send it to the foundations. So I kept kind of playing her game. Oh, I'm so sorry that I offended you, da 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 da, da. So she sends back, you know, I said, my family's involved. I, I get crazy when they're involved, I get uneasy. And she says in all caps, no, your family isn't involved. This has to do about me, just writing a story about you, your YouTube videos and giveaways, your health issues, kidney issues. None of the other people who we did pieces on acted like this. So now it's turning around on me because she knows I'm starting to catch her in a lie. I contact her back with my text messages and I apologize for my behavior and all that. And um, then she says, nobody was ever skeptical of my job. I should have never said anything, sent anything to you until it was all done. This is my fault. I get nothing out of this for you. No money, nothing. This was out of the kindness of my heart. It's torn, you guys. So we go on and then we leave it. And this morning I text her, if I don't get the story soon, my aunt will be prosecuting. I wanted to give you a chance to prove to me first that all of this was, uh, that all of this, that all of what you said was real. If you, if not, you can't produce, if you can't produce the article, then you might want to know that I plan on letting her prosecute. Her response was, on what? Trying to do something good. I knew I picked the wrong person. Don't threaten me. I can't put a story out I don't believe in. I don't believe in anything you say. And I don't like how you were being so pushy and now threatening me. You really don't have a heart. I'm so glad I didn't put out your story. You are just out for money. I'm out to help people with their health and wellness and happiness. It's my choice if I want to do something for someone. You can't make me. Please do not contact me again, Lord. Okay. So I get back to her with some comments about the situation. And I said, if I were out for just money, you would have gotten what you wanted, but I was going to wait for the money. So I basically turned around and said, listen, I don't know where this came from. I'm just telling you that I'm weary of the situation. It all sounds too good to be true. You're going back and forth with things. I haven't seen the article yet. I just want to see what you produce, what you've worked so hard on this last week. I want to see it. She sends back to me, the truth always comes out in the end. May God be with you and your family. I wish you and your family all the best. I will pray for you. I'm sorry that you feel that way because I was telling her I was going to prosecute and go to the detectives and things like that. And she says, best of luck to you and your family. I'm now feeling I'm now feeling I'm being harassed by you. I already asked you to kindly stop, but you continue to harass and threaten me. I'm asking you nicely for the last time to please stop contacting me. Not another text, please. I didn't text her, you guys. I did not text her one time. I didn't want to get in trouble for harassment. So about an hour and a half later, she texts me with some bogus article, okay, that's on Facebook. And I took pictures because I knew she was going to take it down. So I'm going to go, I'm going to show you guys the article. 
I want you guys to tell me if this to you took a multitude of days to write, okay? So this is the article that she wrote about me, okay? In three days, that's the article you write about me. And you have this piece of work here, right? Same picture thing, so she posted it on some bogus website, Facebook page. And then, you know, there's this donation page, right? Under my name, mind you. This little gem, it's under the National Kidney Foundation website, which is completely illegal for her to do, to put my name on that website. So I basically took pictures of everything because I knew that I was going to need it. So her Facebook page, you guys, has no friends. None, no activity, no nothing. And she posts this on her Facebook page. And I'm showing you guys this because it's searchable and she, you can find her this way. It's not illegal for me to do this, but it's not slander because it's public domain. I'm sitting there going, okay, wow. And she writes me in the same text message that it's going live for 30 days. July 13th is the end date, da 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 da. Um, and then she says, I hope this helps your family. I'm not a scam artist. An apology would be nice but that's up to you to decide. Let me know if you can see it. If not, let me know. So I sent her back, I can't see it because originally I couldn't click on the link, da 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 da, it was blocked, I told her you have to tag it, blah 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 blah. And I said, when you get a minute, please send me a copy of the article to my email as I was under the impression I had to read it first because she told me that I had to read it and approve it before she could put it up. It was against the law for her to put it up without my knowledge and without my consent. That is what she said, those were her words. Her words. And she said, oh, I'm assuming you got to see the kidney foundation I put up for you. And I said, no, I didn't, blah, 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 blah. I said, the link is blocked. So she says, I'll fix it. And then she sends me text messages of the article she created on Facebook. And it says, hope you get them both. Start a PayPal account so all the funds go into your account. Please share your face. Please share on your fa Facebook page. Thank you. Oh, man. So I started to say, no, I didn't read it. I'm going to wait to open a PayPal, blah, 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 blah. I said, I'm really sorry, but I need to see the documents for the Kinney Foundation to our sponsors and the links to the websites. Basically telling her that I needed to see all of this documentation she said she had, all of the proof she had, everything that she said she had that was going to, to me, I needed to see it because that's my, my right as a person who is being given this foundation money. I said, this is all really, really weird. Didn't you say there are sponsors and such who are already given money and I could get a lump sum or wait 30 days? And she says, oh, I'm sorry. I'll take the picture down and your family out of it. I can take it down as well. I did this for your children. You have drained me. And I only did the, and I only did the Kinney Foundation no sponsors because I couldn't write the article about something I don't believe is genuine. So I'll take your pictures down and name. I wish you and your family the best. Pray for, I will pray for people donating to your fund. And I said, mm, okay. I said, can I ask you a question? If you have no activity on your Facebook page, who are you expecting to see the article? Da, 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 da. I said, and when will Ellen be contacting me? I, I called them today. They never heard of me. So then she puts a different picture up. And then she says, fixed. Your family isn't involved and I'm done. You are not my friend. So you, you only get to see your kidney foundation donation page. I don't trust you. And I'm done. I didn't have to put that up today. Uh, for you, but I did. I'm in shock by your actions. You guys, I swear. So I text her back. I contacted the police. I went to the authorities. I hired someone to privately and get investigate you. Um, I said I have, you know, a a family who can help me do this. I have a family who can help me find you. I, I have your address. What I did in the interim, you guys, is I reverse searched her number. I found that it belonged to a different name. I found that it belonged to an address. I have her address. I have a lot of information on her, you guys, a lot. I know her first name, her last name, her real name, mind you, not the one that she was using in the emails. And that's the other funny thing is her Instagram name, her email name, her blog name, and her real name and her phone num and her phone name are all different. They're all different. That's when I really knew when I investigated that, when I paid to reverse look up her number, that's when I knew that the situation was like, that's it. Like I knew that it was a fraud, that it was completely and utterly a scam. And my gut tells me that she was expecting me to get so excited about the money that I would give her my bank account details. But once I told her I didn't have a bank account and that I only had a few hundred dollars to my name, 
that's when things started to change. And I did that on purpose, even though that's not the case. I did that on purpose because I wanted to see how she re would react to that information. And I was right. Her demeanor completely changed after I told her that information. So I told her, take it down, do it now, do not use my name, do not use my story, do not ever write anything about me, do not use the information, I will be prosecuting you. And she said, exactly. I didn't want to go through with helping you, but I did. So if you want it taken down, fine by me. I'm so hurt and furious by you draining uh, my energy and you're texting me every two minutes and, and threats. I will definitely be suing you for slander and harassment. Yes. Scam you. You have money. You scam artist. I'm done. Done. Not another text message, my dear. Not another message. So basically when I told her that I had family who could help me find her, prosecute her, I knew her address, I knew all this information about her, she came back at me attacking me, telling me I was a scam artist because I told her that I didn't have money, my husband was unemployed, um, that I lost my job teaching, which is all true, you guys, all of that is true. I never once said that I had money, this is my family's money, uh, you know, not mine directly, but my family members in California, who are gonna help me investigate her, and that part is true. I'm I'm having a family member help me investigate her. We're going to find her. We've already started prosecuting, or I guess researching her. We've contacted the contacted the authorities. I have gone very very far to make sure that she does not do this again. Um, so I, I said I never said that I had money, did I? I said someone in my family did. Watch it. I said I cannot wait until you go to jail. Go right ahead and try and sue me for slander, honey. Any judge would laugh in your face. And then she blocked me. So as soon as she figured out that I knew that it was a scam because I told her that I was going to prosecute her, that I had already gone to the police, which I have, I told her that I was going to find her address, bring it, bring her to justice, make sure that nobody else ever was involved in this situation, uh, nobody was ever duped by her again, my thought is that she's watched my videos and she's watched my weekly giveaway videos, so she assumed that I had money. She assumed that... I was loaded and I've mentioned a couple times that I have, you know, a family member who has supported me in the past who helps me out sometimes and I think she kind of was watching those videos and utilized that along with my story about my kidneys, my kids, um, you know, my abuse that I went through as a child. I think that she used when that. When she put all of those pieces together, I think that's when she kind of figured out that she could try and scam me. And I was excited and I really wanted to believe it. I really wanted to believe that she was who she said who she said she was. I wanted to believe that all of these wonderful things were going to happen for me, that I was going to be on the Ellen show, uh, that you know, she I don't know I just I guess I felt that I worked so hard for what I do on YouTube and my life in general you know being a teacher and a mom and uh, a wife and, and a person you know just in general being a good person and giving back as much as I can I guess I just wanted to believe in my subconscious that someone finally saw that and not that I do it for recognition because I don't but it was just nice to know or at that time to feel like maybe my hard work was paying off. I guess the thing that makes me the most angry is that she used my kids and she used my illness to try and trick me and to try and scam me and you just don't do that. You you just you just don't do that. So the fact that I'm sitting here saying this to you all, telling you this story, it could have gone a lot differently. I don't know what her plan was as far as the money but as soon as she said there was a donation of $750,000, that's when I started connecting the dots that her plan the entire time was to get into my bank account and steal my money. And it was a very elaborate scheme, you guys, I'm not going to lie. She did some reconnaissance, she did some research, and whoever she's working with, they did a really good job at connecting all of the pieces of my life and using that against me. I really hope they're watching this video. I really hope that they have seen this because I want them to know that they will be prosecuted to every extent of the law and that I will make sure, even if it is years from now, that I will get, that I get my justice because I don't want this to happen to anybody else. And the fact that they went this far to create, that's another thing I was going to mention, they created a fake Instagram profile, a fake Facebook profile, a fake blog, a fake email. I can't even email her anymore. It comes back. One of my really awesome followers 
um, on Instagram, I had her investigate the pictures and she found that all of the pictures on her Instagram page were fake from Pinterest and Google. And I thought something was funny when I could no longer click on her page. I guess she blocked me from there as soon as I started kind of figuring out what was going on, but her page is still active. I had one of my Instagram friends, Glam by Brit XO, investigate um, this particular person's Instagram. And she found all of the pictures were fake. She researched it for a little bit. They came back from Pinterest and Google and none of them were real. So I know that her Instagram account is fake. Her YouTube account is, or her, her Facebook is fake because there's no pictures on it. There's no activity. Her YouTube account is fake. Her comments have been deleted off of all of my pages. I mean, she went as far, you guys, as to comment on all of my social media, make friends with me, uh, befriend me in any way she could, make comments on my videos, and I have email after email after email of very incriminating of evidence against her, and I, I don't know, I just feel like I needed to make this video because it, this could have gone a completely different way, and it will. If they continue, whoever is up to this, and I will find out, if they continue to be able to do this, they will eventually find someone who their money will be completely taken if that was their intention or their identities, whatever. Thank goodness I didn't give her any personal information, my social, my bank account details or anything. A lot of what I did give her is public knowledge, um, except for some pieces of the story that I told her. And that's the one thing I will always regret. But lesson learned, because this has taught me that as I continue to grow on YouTube, I really have to be skeptical and I really have to be careful of who I trust. It's going to take a lot for me to trust anyone else when they come to me to sponsor me or support me. And that sucks that she ruined that because I could have had a really awesome chance at gaining some friends here. And now I'm going to have to be really cautious and careful of everyone that I come across. So that's the one thing I think, other than the fact that my children were involved and you just do not involve my children. You don't. I could sit here and cry. I could sit here and be sad, but I'm not going to do that because that would mean that I would give them the satisfaction of knowing that they hurt me and they didn't. I'm a very smart woman, I'm a very educated woman, I'm a very clever and an intellectual woman, and I knew probably from the get-go in my gut that this entire thing was a scam, but in my heart I wanted to believe it, so I allowed it to play out, I allowed it to go as far as it could, and I'm really glad that I trusted my instinct and I trusted myself enough to, to call her out. And I will continue to work on this. I will update you guys on whether or not she gets caught. I will update you guys on what the detectives say. Um, all of that. I will make sure I keep you guys in the loop. That's all I have, you guys. I know this was really long. I know that there was a lot of detail to it and I read off a lot of text messages, but I felt like a lot of the pieces were important. Every single piece that I needed to tell you was important. So if this video is long, I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you're new here, Thanks again for coming. I know if this is the first video you see, make sure you check out some other videos of mine. I swear this is not the only stuff I do on my channel. I actually have a pretty good channel, you know? Probably hit the subscribe button because I want you to be involved. I want you to become a part of the NG fam, and that would mean the world to me. Make sure you guys share this video, please, as many times as you can. Put it on your Twitter, put it on your Instagram, share it with your friends. I really want people to know that Sheer makeup artistry is a scam. So I want people to know that this woman or this man or whoever is, is scamming me will not get away with it again. So do not trust, do not trust anything you guys that ever sounds like that, that they're gonna help you with anything because it's probably a scam nowadays. So lesson learned, right? Anyway, please leave me a comment down below, you guys, if you have ever heard of this woman or you've ever been involved with this woman or you've ever been mentioned to the about this woman whatever it may be let me know in the comments because i would like to take this to the authorities i would like to let them know some more information that's it you guys thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for you know being here supporting me and i can gain followers the old-fashioned way you know after she told me that this was gonna blow up and i was gonna have all these followers and all these subscribers and my channel was going to go viral and that's another thing she played off of I think you know but I can do that myself I can gain subscribers myself I'm doing just fine without my help thank you again you guys I really do appreciate it take care 
take care of each other and look out for people who don't want to do the same. I will see you all in my next video. Bye!